today's episode of Product Bytes, we talk with uh, Toby Russell, the co-CEO of Shift Technologies. We reach Toby at home and we talk about what it takes to build a, a successful company and also what it takes to build a successful product team. Toby, thank you for being with us. And uh, to start, would you like to introduce yourself? So your name, your role, the company. I'm Toby Russell, I'm co-CEO of Shift. Uh, we run a company uh, that essentially sells cars online. Uh, we're the, I'd like to think first, truly omni-channel e-commerce player in used auto, which allows customers to buy a car right there on a website or have a car driven to their home to test drive at home and buy it uh, right there in the driveway. Or if they'd like, come to one of our, what we call hubs, our logistics centers, and uh, see a few cars at a time. Uh, the vast majority of our cars are, of course, bought online and brought to consumers at homes in true e-commerce fashion. And we're really looking to create an, a situation where um, buying a car by using technology is simple and accessible to everybody, which obviously is not today if you look at the traditional experience. But we're doing our best to try to make a difference for people in buying cars. That's the deal. That's the second biggest purchase in someone's life. I think it's a terrible experience today, and we're hoping to make that better. Everybody needs that, right? Yeah. We hope so. We're, awesome. you know, we're, doing, we're doing our best for folks. <laughs> Hello, Toby. Thank you for uh, being with us today. And uh, Shift is, uh, I, I follow Shift since the beginning and was a startup. Now it's almost a unicorn. And that has been quite a journey listed on the NASDAQ. It's, it's quite a journey. And of course, uh, to be this successful, you're solving a very clear problem. What is the problem you're solving for the customers? I think most great product problems are taking on an area where customers face a fundamental trade-off. I want one thing, but I have to give up this. I want this, but I have to give up that. In the case of cars, people want reliability and want to know that they can trust the vehicle, but they also don't want to overpay for it and get taken advantage of. Uh, we believe that technology can break that trade-off. And so our goal is to allow customers to access the best cars used cars that have been typically uh, one owner, no accidents, strong options package driven like 10,000 miles a year, but are less expensive because that depreciation has already happened. I can get a better thing for less. That's a trade-off break. That's what I want. And Shift is about a better thing for less. We use technology and logistics to enable that. Awesome. And uh, of course, uh, you started from somewhere. Right, you you had the idea, and then you you said, okay, how do we build this? So thinking about a minimum viable product, uh, and then getting something to market to validate the idea. How did you get started? So the original, uh, the very beginnings was having a bad experience in the space. Uh, I was actually working at a large bank, Capital One Financial, and I thought, hey, I want to start using the products because I was going to be doing product work uh, at that bank. And uh, one of the things I was planning on doing was buying a car. So I reached out and I said, hey, I want to buy a car. Can I get a loan and go buy a car? And the high level answer was no. Hey, you got to go to a dealer to do that. And then maybe they'll choose Capital One. Maybe they won't. I thought, that's kind of weird. Like, I should be able to choose my bank and then go get the car. Uh, and that was, at that time, it was not an easy thing to do. It could, you, just, you couldn't do that. So that, that was the first, like, head scratcher, like, wait, what's going on here? Later, as we began working on that product and project, I discovered that like half of the used car sales in the US are person to person. That is somebody sells a car directly to somebody else. It doesn't go through a dealer. It doesn't go through a software platform. It's literally like, think like Craigslist or uh, classified ads. That struck me as a hmm, bit of a head scratcher. What's going on there? Like that's very odd that people would choose to do this in, 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 in what is an actually difficult transaction on their own with no structure or support, including no financing. Most people don't walk around with like $20,000 in their pocket. And those peer-to-peer -peer transactions, it turns out, the ones that are sold between people are disproportionately low cost, older cars. And I think in part because financing is not available in that case. And so one of our first products at Shift was the consigned car, where we would guarantee the customer a certain amount and then split the difference on, on the upside and then pay the customer when it cleared. Now, low, like that was sort of a, the beginning MVP product. 
ran around, started, you know, like asking customers, hey, can we offer you the ability to sell your car? Can we offer you the ability to sell your car with financing? Can we make it easier for you as a seller of cars to do the thing and not get taken advantage of and make it easier for buyers to get access to financing? And so what we slowly but surely did was build out pieces of the puzzle to essentially work back from what sellers of cars need and then buyers of cars need to enable to connect people like one, 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 an individual seller to an individual uh, buyer in terms of like making that car exchange happen. And we just built each piece of the puzzle along the way as we received the feedback of, hey, this could be better, this could improve. But in the very early days, it was like parking cars outside in front of people's houses in, you know, in apartments doing total prototyping. Um, and it started out with like basically little to no website at all. And really just like learning and doing the thing because in as much as you can, test the thing manually and figure out if it works, then add software to scale it, there is goodness there. I don't know if you've read uh, Eric Reese's book, The Lean Startup, but uh, there is a lot of applicability to that concept. And that is, if you can't make a thing work end to end at like once, it's unlikely that software is gonna make it work end to end um, hundreds of thousands of times. So you kind of wanna start start lean, get to, get to the real insight of like, what, what are we really solving here? Work back from customer need, and build just really minimalist prototypes to, to learn your way forward. And that, that's the one piece of advice that I would offer is, uh, you know, prototype then scale. I love it. Yeah. So instead of spending uh, a ton of time, a ton of resources in building a complex system, they can do it all. Uh, focus on the core uh, hypothesis of your business, the core uh, user experience you want to deliver and figure out a way to deliver it quickly, validate that, and then build it, uh, the system. That is, that is exactly right. I, I have found also too often um, in, in product, folks frequently fall prey to what I call a Swiss army knife trap. And that is, well, wait a minute, my product will be good enough if it has the scissors and the magnifying glass and the, and the knife and the all and this and that. And it's like, and, and only if it has all those things, then it will be good. And I usually encourage people to say, look, if the knife, literally the blade itself, isn't good enough to compete with like other knives, probably you're not onto something. <laughs> Usually each piece of the puzzle has to, has to be a value add and be useful and competitive uh, on its own before you can then piece them together and create even greater value. And I encourage doing both. For example, uh, along the journey in uh, building out Shift, uh, I, I, I tend to do two things. I tend to like actually be a customer of the product. So I'll go out and I'll buy cars from us. And uh, we have what we call concierge for a day where you can act as our frontline employee concierge and go actually serve customers and experience um, working and serving customers directly. It would be like the Starbucks equivalent of the corporate team going and being a barista for a day, uh, which I think is critically important and really valuable to always be interacting directly with customers and getting uh, feedback. And of course, uh, this seems like easy but you must have faced challenges, including yes. <laughs> coaching your team, growing your team, uh, and making sure that they were doing the right things. So can you share a, maybe a couple of challenges from a product standpoint that you had to overcome? Um, you know, in a weird way, I'd almost describe the challenges that I have experienced primarily in, in, in building a company are actually more around um, people than the products themselves. And that is, yeah, the, the, the challenge is making sure that you're getting, the, getting great folks, high talented, really capable folks, setting up with them up with a system where they can just run, uh, test, learn, succeed. And that usually, when they're able to move quickly and iterate quickly, is where you get goodness. But by and large, if you want to be a product leader, I actually encourage people thinking about people first and then product, because where your best product is going to come from is your people talking to customers, learning, and then your engineers and your product um, designers and your product managers and your data scientists uh, riffing on how to solve those customer problems. And so I would think first and foremost, what is my system for building product? What is my philosophy and approach? And how do I get great people up against that? 
and then worry a little bit more about the, the, the specific tactical product problems. So acting as a servant leader, really empower your people to be able to, to have the skill set, the experience, the tools, everything they need to be successful. Absolutely. That's that's where your highest leverage is going to be any day of the week. Uh, you know, if, if you're watching a podcast and saying, hey, I'm going to learn like the great product insight, I'm not going to get the product insight. Your people are going to bring you the product insight and they're going to do it by getting signal from customers and they're going to do it by testing and just practically learning, like just just grinding by putting out one 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 prototype after another and then one MVP and then the next MVP and then iter iteratively improving. Uh, and that creating that system that enables uh, strong, capable people to do that is your best bet for getting to a good product uh, it, it versus, versus hoping to have like the, you know, the, the abstract brilliant insight. And not everybody probably has the, the personality and the traits to be successful in that environment. So for example, you need to be able to, to fail quickly and learn from failure. So what are traits that you look for, look for in people that you bring in as a product people? Um, I have uh, four pillars. And then I'm going to talk about one important behavior that I didn't that I didn't really think about originally, but I, I look for now. The four pillars are, are should sound pretty obvious. One is customer centricity, like truly being thoughtful about what does a customer need and how do I make sure that I can build a business on that? Because you got to be able to have sustainability. Uh, two is a desire to actually make a big change. So you got to have people who are willing to be bold enough to say, look, I actually want to change the world. I want to make a big difference, not like a 2%, 3% change, like a 5X change. And I'm willing to, 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 to run hard at making that. And that energizes me. The third part I call see it, solve it, ship it. It's about being a problem solver. I'm not just going to identify the problem and I'm not going to just solve it on paper. I'm going to solve it, but I'm going to deploy a solution. I'm going to ship a solution, see it, solve it and ship it. Got to just love and want to do that to be a strong entrepreneurial uh, product leader. And the last thing, and this is important and it relates to the behavior, um, the last thing uh, is elevate each other. That's like a, a key thing is saying, hey, under almost no scenario, am I a, a sole player here? It's about me being able to work with others to be able to up their game and be able to win as a team. Because really it's when you bring together differential and, and, and really diverse backgrounds and skill sets that you get different outcomes versus everybody being the same. I mean, and the classic, you know, everybody knows this, the classic, like get en an en engineering capability, design talent and um, uh, product talent, potentially data science slash analytics talent, all coming from different points of view, but being able to bring that together and perform as a team is like, that's where breakaway magic happens. And related to that, and this is not something that I knew or saw at the outset, I actually test in interviews for comfort and ability to engage in conflict. What does that mean? Uh, Amazon has a saying, disagree and commit. I didn't understand that for quite a while and I didn't appreciate just how important it was explicitly to select for it. I will literally ask people in interviews, hey, give me an example of the best person you worked with, the worst person you worked with, the best boss, the worst boss, the best peer, the worst peer, the best employee, the worst employee. And specifically ask them, tell me about a time when the two of you disagreed on a thing. How did you disagree? How did you resolve the conflict? Uh, Steve Jobs had a saying that great product are like polished gems, but polished gems come from friction. And friction is people disagreeing, uh, having varying points of view, grabbing different data, defending, enabling, interacting. And that friction is what polishes the, and creates the beautiful gem. But to avoid it is to not be able to gauge in the proper process. There are trade-offs, there are tensions, there are challenges, there is conflict in creating something new and different. And so the ability to navigate and handle that conflict well, very important for elevate each other. So those are the four things, customer centricity, see it, solve it, ship it, uh, elevate each other and change the world because that's how you make the whole thing go around. That's awesome. And also very, very clear, like having these four pillars is super crystal clear, very nice. Yeah. I wanted to thank you. And it's been, uh, I learned a lot from you just, just by in this conversation, that, that's awesome. Likewise, I'm, I'm inspired by your entrepreneurial spirit and also uh, gathering information from lots of different people and then making sure people can get access to that. It's, it's just a great way to learn, to give people access to the thoughts and experiences of others. Um, so I, I commend you in that and appreciate you including me.